So, so far we have been able to calculate the pH at each point of the titration curve of when we titrate the weak acid with a strong base. It's good that we see many examples so that we get the idea of how to calculate different numbers depending on the Ka of the acid, the concentration of the acid or the base, etc. Okay, so let's just practice more and more and that's what we're going to do in this video. So, let's do that. Draw the, pro the approximate titration curve of 10 milliliters of 0.5 molar formic acid with a Ka of 5 times 10 to negative 4 with potassium hydroxide 0,1 molar. Okay, let's start doing that. And let me see. Okay, so first of all, notice that the acid is five times more concentrated. So if I have 10 milliliters of acid, which is highly concent more, five times more concentrated than the base, it'll take five times more of volume. Hopefully you can see that if this is 50 milliliters, that will be my, my equivalence point. So I'm going to draw an approximate curve. Okay. Notice also that the pH increases pretty fast when you have um, weak acids. This is a characteristic of a weak acid. In a strong acid, the curve is more lower down here. Okay. Actually, for the same concentration, it would decrease even lower. Okay. How do you calculate this point? Remember, you need to build the ice table using the Ka of a 0,1 molar acid um, and, the and the equivalence point. It will take place always above 7 because what you have here is formate, so the conjugate base. And how do you calculate this pH? Well, using the ice table of using Kb. Okay, which you can calculate through Ka, again, and also not acknowledging that there has been some dilution, so the base is not a 0.5 molar anymore. Okay, um, so this would be the general shape. Also, notice that because the Ka is this value, it means that the pKa should be uh, 3.3, I believe, right? Um, if you do the negative log of of this, it should give you around that number. So this means that halfway of that titration curve, and I'm just realizing that probably this titration curve is not at scale, but halfway of the titration curve, because of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, tells me that the pH, when you have equal amounts of the base over the acid. Uh, when you have equal amounts of base over the acid, the pH is equal to pKa, and that's what will happen halfway of the titration curve. Okay, this will be around 3.3, and this is why I'm saying it's not at scale because this difference is way too too little. Okay, uh, but that's important to realize that we can pretty much without doing any calculation, see more or less where the the shape is going to be. Okay. Now it is that the second part of the question says on top of the first curve, let's see if it's clear enough, um, draw the titration curve of 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar formic acid. Well, if it's 0.1 molar, notice that first of all the titration, the equivalence point will take place at 10 milliliters However, the let me see if I can do it. It will start at a l higher pH because it's more diluted. It will go through the same point. I'm, s I'm sorry, that will be that's not correct. Um, that means at five milliliters, it's the it will be halfway of the titration. This should go around here. Okay, and the equivalence point should be around this point. Okay, This would be for if it's five times diluted. Notice that halfway of the titration always have to be the pH equal to the pKa. 
okay? Because that's what the henderson hasselbalch equation says, regardless of the initial concentration of, of the acid. Let's practice more. All right, in this case, it says the, draw the titration curve of 10 milliliters of ammonium chloride, 0, 1 molar, with a more concentrated sodium hydroxide. In this case, so if I draw pH versus the volume in milliliters of sodium hydroxide, 0, 2 molar, because the base is twice as concentrated as the acid, it will take half of, the, of its volume to neutralize it. So expect the at 10 milliliters to see the jump in to see the jump in pH. Okay. Again, the um, ammonium is an acid. However, so if this is my seven uh, initial pH, if you set up the I stable using the Ka, you will still get a pH lower than seven. Okay, because ammonium ion is an acid. However, halfway of the titration, it has it has a pKa of 9, so it has to make it all the way to 9, okay? So up here, down here, okay? So, and at the equivalence point, whatever that may be, it'll be the pH of ammonia. So should expect something like, like that. Uh, whoop, doesn't go that far, but anyhow, something like that. Okay, um, I wrote this example to make you realize that a, an acid with a pKa higher than 7, it's still an acid. It still gives a pH lower than 7. However, halfway of that titration, the pH has to be equal to the, to the pKa. This is why you see such a large jump the first half of this titration. This is an ugly curve. I'm sure that uh, I could show you a better picture, but so that you at least you know the mechanism. Okay, let's run another example. Now we're going to be titrating uh, a weak base. Notice that sodium nitrate. What you're actually nitrating is this with H plus, and that will give you the nitrous acid. Okay. Now the titration curve of 10 milliliters zero one molar with 0, 1 molar HCl, notice that if this is 7, you will start, because you have a base, you will start the pH higher than 7, okay? And if the Ka is this much, the pKa, you do the negative log of that, and that should be, and I'm going to make this up, it's around 3.5. Please check these numbers, you do the negative log of of this should be something like around that. So 3.5 more or less is actually it's halfway. Okay. And if I have 0, 0,1 molar of base and 0, 0,1 molar of acid, it'll take as many milliliters. So by 10 milliliters, that's when you will have your equivalence point. At 5 milliliters, that will be the halfway. The pH is equal to pKa five milliliters. So your curve will have to and yeah, so it should be something like that. Right? Halfway and then goes up, boom. Right? Fairly um, maybe it's not at scale, but this is this is an ugly let me do it again. So start buffer and jump. Okay? Uh, this is the equivalence point. This is the pH equal to pKa. We'll keep practicing. The idea is this is a buffer region. The buffer region is typically an area in which it's pretty flat, so that means that the pH does not change too much when you're adding uh, acids or bases. We will see many applications in in few sessions but at least I want you to see the application of buffer region just in titrations.